Hello, I'm Moon Kersley. I'm currently doing beauty therapy at Crawley College and today I'm going to talk about contraindications and how the exam likes to style questions on it. There are two types of contraindications. There's one that prevents a treatment and one that restricts. With the prevention one, if someone was to come in with athlete's foot for a pedicure, it would completely prevent the treatment from going ahead. Luckily, caused due to some contraindications, they are contagious, or majority of them just completely stops the error from being worked on, causing you to have to be as professional as you can and to suggest to the client to what you believe it is and that they're going to have to read book for another day once it's all cleared up. Restriction, you might be able to get them in and adjust their treatment and make adaptations for them to still be able to have the treatment. For instance, if they came in with like a broken toe for a pedicure, you would be as careful around the area as you possibly could. The pedicure could still go ahead. As it is not as bad, you can find ways around it. Making sure to know the difference between prevent and restrict is a very big part because not only do questions like to play around with this to make sure that you know the difference between prevent and restrict, it's very important when going into the real world with actual salons to know what can and cannot go ahead. Like I said, many exam boards really like to play with the contraindication one as it's quite a big question with so many possible answers and so many treatments have their own contraindications that prevent stuff. To know the difference between the two makes making these questions a breeze at the end of the day because you just have to make sure to know the main things that prevent it. There are very big ones like the prevention Impetigo, ringworm, herpes simplex and nits are a very big one on what prevents. Searching those up and having them written down on like a revision card will make it very easy when coming down to revision as you would have them there and they are a surefire due to how contagious they are. They are immediate prevention. Restrictions like bruises, cuts and broken bones are another really good one because of restrictions as there are ways to work around it. For instance, like I said, the broken toe and the pedicure, bruising on the hand, they have like a cut on their face, you can work around that pendulometry. Or if they have like a broken ankle and they came with a pedicure, you can offer them a manicure instead as that foot would be out of limits and no one really wants to have a one foot pedicure. The questions range in very different ways from a simple two mark card to just list contraindications to having more three, four mark questions where you have to actually explain the contraindication. It's very common they give you a like treatment, like a facial, and then ask you to list contraindications that either prevent or restrict. It's very common that they do the prevention one, but you may from here and here and now get a restriction one. So be prepared to know the difference on both sides, but if the question is to say restrict. The big thing I can say are two main tips. One, a therapist cannot diagnose anything. If someone wants to come in with, say, athletes, but you cannot tell them that it is. As we're not diagnosed doctors, we can only suggest what we think it is and give them ideas on how to help it and suggest that they go to their local GP to get it sorted and properly diagnosed. Because not only could we mistake of something else, it is best that somebody who is diagnosed to give it as they can provide treatments to help reduce it. Also, when it comes down to restrictions, when in doubt, leave it out. That's what I've been taught. For instance, if somebody comes in with diabetes and you've been let known in this in your consultation and they've told you that there are our medication but they do feel that it's slightly unbalanced, you may not know whether or not to do the steam or not in the facial. And I've been told that if I'm not 100% sure whether or not I should do it, I should just leave it out because it's safer than to risk it and have something happen to them. For instance, as diabetes gives you very thin skin, the last thing you want is to risk any circulation breaking the skin or breaking the skin from the surface and it's very hard for it to heal. So like I said, when in doubt, leave it out. I'm hoping you got some information out of it. I can now tell the difference between a prevent and a restriction contraindication. Telling the difference is a big part and even I was getting confused at first so do not worry if it's slightly confusing at first. 
my biggest tip from what I've taken away from this with the revision is to take flashcards and have one side that says restrict and one side that says prevention. And you can write down the lists of each one to each treatment and it'll give you the great way to tell the difference. And then you can bundle it up and take another one and write the entire contraindication down on it so you can understand it. You can get to the end before your exam with the ability to just have it, the word written in front of you and being able to read it out and say the symptoms of it or what to do and how to identify it. That will be amazing because not only is this good for your exam, it's really important to know the knowledge before you go into the salons. Good luck out there and good luck with your exams and I'm hoping that it's not too complicated for the end of the day.